Donald Harvey was born in 1952 in Butler County, Ohio. He was well liked by his teachers, but fellow students remembered him as being unapproachable and a loner who seemed to prefer being in the company of adults than playing in the schoolyard. What wasn't known at the time is that from the age of four and for several years after, Harvey was allegedly being sexually abused by his uncle and an older male neighbor. Harvey was a smart kid, but he found school to be boring, so he dropped out. At the age of 16, he received a diploma from a correspondence school out of Chicago and his GED the following year. In 1970, unemployed and living in Cincinnati, he decided to go to Marymount Hospital in London, Kentucky, to help care for his sick grandfather. In time, he became a familiar face at the hospital and was asked if he could work as an orderly. Harvey accepted and immediately was placed into a position where he spent time alone with patients. His duties included dispensing medications to patients, inserting catheters and taking care of other personal medical needs. To most in the medical field, a feeling that they are helping the sick is a reward for their job, but Harvey saw it as having the ultimate control and power over a person's life. Almost overnight, he became a judge and executioner. On the 30th of May, 1970, just two weeks into his employment, stroke victim Logan Evans angered Harvey by rubbing feces on his face. In return, Harvey smothered Evans with plastic and a pillow. No one at the hospital became suspicious. For Harvey, the incident seemed to unleash an inner monster. From here on, no patient or friend would be safe from Harvey's revenge. He continued to kill 15 patients over the next 10 months that he worked at the hospital. He often smothered or hooked up faulty oxygen tanks to the patients. But when angered, his methods became more brutal and included impaling a patient with a metal hanger inserted into his catheter. Harvey spent much of his personal time away from work being depressed and contemplating suicide. During this time, he was involved in two relationships. James Peluso and Harvey were on and off lovers for 15 years. He later killed Peluso when he became too ill to care for himself. He was also allegedly involved with Vernon Midden, who was a married man with children and worked as an undertaker. In their conversations, Midden would sometimes talk about how their body reacts to different trauma. The information became invaluable to Harvey as he plotted new undetectable ways to kill. When the relationship began to fall apart, Harvey entertained fantasies of embalming Midden while he was still alive. Now, as his mind began to branch out from the confinement of the hospital wars, Harvey considered murdering lovers, friends, and neighbors who crossed him. On the 31st of March, 1971, was the last day Harvey worked at the Marymount Hospital. That evening, he was arrested for burglary, and Harvey, who was very drunk, confessed to being a murderer. An extensive investigation failed to turn up any evidence, and ultimately, Harvey just faced the burglary charges. Things weren't going so well for Harvey, and he decided it was time to get out of town. He enlisted in the US Air Force, but his military career was cut short after two failed suicide attempts. He was sent home with an honorable discharge for medical reasons. Returning home fueled his depression, and again he tried to kill himself. With few options left, Harvey checked himself into VA hospital for treatment. While there, he received 21 electric shock treatments, but was released after 90 days. Harvey got a part-time clerical job at the Cardinal Hill Convalescent Hospital in Lexington, Kentucky. It is not known if he killed any patients during the two and a half years there, but the opportunity to kill had been decreased. He later told the police that he was able to control the compulsion to kill during this time. In September 1975, Harvey moved back to Cincinnati, Ohio and landed a night position in the VA hospital. It is believed while employed there, Harvey killed at least 15 patients. But now, 
His killing methods included injections of cyanide and adding rat poison and arsenic to his victims' foods. During his relationship with Midden, he was briefly introduced to the occult. In June 1977, he looked into it further and decided to join. This is where he met his spiritual guide, Duncan, who was at one time a doctor. Harvey attributes Duncan for helping him decide on who would be his next victim. Throughout the years, Harvey was in and out of several relationships, seemingly without harming any of his lovers. But in 1980, all of this stopped, first with his ex-lover Doug Hill, who Harvey tried to kill by putting arsenic into his food. Carl Howler was his second victim. In August 1980, Howler and Harvey began living together, but problems surfaced when Harvey found out that Howler was having sex outside of the relationship. Harvey began poisoning his food with arsenic as a way to control Howler's wandering ways. His next victim was a female friend of Carl's who he thought interfered too much with their relationship. He infected her with hepatitis B and also tried to infect her with the AIDS virus, which failed. Neighbor Helen Metzger was his next victim also feeling that she was a threat to his relationship with Carl, he laced food and a jar of mayonnaise she had with arsenic. He then put a lethal dose of arsenic in the pie that he gave to her, which quickly led to her death. On the 25th of April, 1983, following an argument with Carl's parents, Harvey started poisoning their food with arsenic. Four days after the initial poisoning, Carl's father, Henry Howler, was dead after suffering a stroke. On the night that he died, Harvey visited him at the hospital and gave him arsenic tainted pudding. His attempts to kill Carl's mother continued, but were unsuccessful. On January 1984, Carl asked Harvey to move out of his apartment. Rejected and angry, Harvey tried several attempts to poison Carl to death, but failed. Although not living together, their relationship continued until May 1986. In 1984 and early 1985, Harvey was responsible for the deaths of at least four more people outside of the hospital. All of his effort trying to poison people did not seem to hurt Harvey's job performance, and in March 1985, he was promoted to morgue supervisor. But by July, he was once again out of work after a security guard found a gun in his gym bag. He was fined and given the option to resign, but the incident was never documented in his employment records. With a clean work record, Harvey was able to land another job in February 1986 as a nurse's AD at the Cincinnati Drake Memorial Hospital. Harvey was thrilled to be out of the morgue and back with the live-in, who he could help play God. But he wasted little time. From April 1986 until March 1987, Harvey killed 26 patients and tried to kill several more. John Powell is his last known victim. After his death, a post-mortem was performed and the smell of cyanide was detected. Three separate tests confirmed that Powell had died of cyanide poisoning. The Cincinnati police investigation included interviewing family, friends and hospital staff. Employees were given an option to take a voluntary lie detector test. Harvey was on the list to be tested, but called sick on the day he was scheduled. Harvey soon became the lead suspect in Powell's murder, especially after investigators learned that co-workers called him the Angel of Death because he was often present when patients died. It was also noted that patient deaths had more than doubled since Harvey began working at the hospital. A search of Harvey's apartment turned up enough incriminating evidence to arrest Harvey for aggregated first-degree murder of John Powell. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity and was held on a $200,000 bond. Beginning on the 11th of August, 1987, and throughout several more days, Harvey confessed to killing over 70 people. After investigating each of his claims, he was charged with 25 counts of aggravated murder, to which Harvey pleaded guilty. He was given four consecutive 20-year sentences. Later in February 1988, he confessed to committing three more murders in Cincinnati. In Kentucky, Harvey confessed to 12 murders and was sentenced to eight life terms plus 20 years.
In an interview with CBS, Harvey said he liked the control that comes along with playing God in that you can decide who will live and who will die. As to how he got away with it for so many years, Harvey said that doctors are overworked and often do not see patients after they have been pronounced dead. He also seemed to cast blame on the hospitals for allowing him to continue to treat patients who angered him and to his friends who tried to make a mess in his life. He showed no remorse for his actions. Donald Harvey was incarcerated in Southern Ohio Correctional Facility. He was also eligible for parole in 2043. On the 28th of March 2017, authorities reported that Harvey had been found in his cell, severely beaten. He died on March 30th, 2017.